For RCR Wireless News, my name is Sean Kinney, and we're here in the Ericsson booth with Shane McClellan. And uh, Shane, you're a, a transport guy. You live and breathe this stuff. I, I'm really curious, based on your conversations with your customers, what are the things that keep you up at night as it relates to transport? Yeah, great question. You know, there are three things that I think are, are really important for us in the 5G wave coming from a transport perspective. The first one is what I call the race to a gigabit over the air. So you've seen the press announcements from all the operators, and everybody wants to do a gigabit to a device. Right, so, so the ecosystem for the devices is coming together. The chipset vendors are creating CAT15, 16 UE capable devices that are capable of taking a gigabit down and 300 meg up. And as a transport person, if each one of us is taking a gig down and 300 meg up, I start doing the math back up into the network, all of a sudden, wow, that's a lot of capacity, that's a lot of uh, bandwidth that's going to be coming back and forth over that network. So that's the first one. The second one is that when I start thinking about deployment of 5G, it's going to be in conjunction with 4G. So 4G will have a macro coverage layer, like an LTE coverage layer, and 5G initially will drop in as part of a capacity augmentation or maybe some uh, additional uh, low latency communication capability for a specific use case. So when each one of us goes into that coverage areas and they move from 5G to 4G, there has to be a coordination amongst the radio basebands. So each baseband for a 5G site has to be coordinated with a baseband for a 4G site such that that low latency interconnect has to happen in real time so we don't lose that quality of user experience. And so that radio coordination is going to be vitally important and that becomes a transport problem because how do I connect those basebands? Uh, the third thing that keeps me up at night is, is what I call, what everybody calls densification. So what you have is you go up spectrum, 28 gig, 39 gig, Everybody knows the physics piece, shrink the coverage area. To get the same amount of coverage, you gotta put more radios out there. So how are we gonna deploy as an industry? How are we gonna deploy three, four times as many radios as we have out there today, right? So that densification is, is important because in order to put that radio out there at the right site, I need to have power, I need to have real estate, and I need to have some kind of connectivity, some kind of microwave connectivity or some kind of fiber connectivity. So when I think about this, the sheer scale of deploying three times, four times as more radios that we have in the network today in North America, I, I start to get nervous. And this is what our customers are asking questions about. All right, so a gig over the air, radio coordination, and massive densification. Yeah. What are you doing to fix these things so you can get some rest? So the one thing that uh, Ericsson's done that, that I'm excited about is we're unique in the industry in creating a, an Ericsson radio system. We call it the ERS, Ericsson radio system. And it's a combination of not only our radios and our baselands and our outside plant and, 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 and physical products, uh, it's also including the transport as part of that. So when you start thinking about the radio system in 5G as compared to 4G, there was kind of clear demark lines, clear silos. We had the radio domain and we had the transport domain. And, and really radio traffic was over the top. Right? It's just like Hulu, just like Netflix. I just want to go from a radio site to a packet core site, and if I can get there reliably, securely, and cheaply, you know, that's good enough. But in the 5G world, as the macro site disaggregates, as you have remote radio heads uh, on towers and poles, and they have co-located basebands, and those basebands then further disaggregate into virtual RAN environments where you have radio processing functionality close to the user, but radio control functionality in the cloud, transport becomes the underlying glue that holds those radio pieces together in the 5G architectures, right? So when we start talking about DRAN and CRAN and VRAN and Elastic RAN, the underlying glue that holds all that together is transport. So by making transport an integral part of the Ericsson radio system, then we have an end-to-end -end story for our customers. So they don't have to worry about buying their 5G radios and then having buyer's remorse because they're plugging it into 4G backhaul and the 4G transport. We want to look at this holistically together and then make the changes at one time. All right, very good, Shane. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to talk transport with me today. Thanks.